Hello and welcome to Shorts in Psychology. The aim of this video is to take a close look at deconstruction and design tasks, which are part of the South Australian SACE science curriculum. The focus of the video and examples used will be in the context of psychology. However, much of the content in this video in terms of pitfalls and strategies for success are relevant to all of the science subjects. For more detail about the task itself, watch my other video on deconstruction and design. In this video, we're going to focus on common pitfalls and exemplars illustrating what success looks like. So let's get started. We'll begin by quickly going over the task requirements. You have flexibility in terms of how you present your information. You're just restricted to a maximum of four A4 pages in stage two and three A4 pages in stage one. The most commonly used formats include flowcharts, mind maps and tables. Make sure your font isn't any smaller than size 10 so that all of your content is legible. Within these pages, you need to outline your deconstruction process and justify your choices made, including the factor being investigated, the investigation design type and method to be used, sample and ethical procedures. Let's now look at some of the common pitfalls students make in the deconstruction and design. The first common pitfall is that students often provide too much background information in the deconstruction and thus their discussion of how their chosen factor could be investigated and measured is too brief and lacks depth. Another common pitfall is that method sections lack detail. This could be the method section in the design and or the outline of how investigation design types and specific measures could be used in the deconstruction. The third and perhaps most common pitfall is that the deconstruction and or design lack justifications for choices made, including the factor to be investigated, design type and measure used, how the sample is being selected and how the procedure is being conducted. The justifications of choices made is a crucial part of the task and these should be evident throughout. Lastly, Sometimes contradictions can be present or information in the deconstruction can be obscured and illegible due to a lack of proofreading. Let's have a closer look at some of these common pitfalls using exemplars. Here's a good example of part of a deconstruction where there is very little background information. Rather than an in-depth exploration of factors that influence conformity and how they influence conformity, this student has merely listed some different factors, followed by a brief and unreferenced statement about the effect of group size. This part of the deconstruction should use references to help you achieve the required depth. This box below contains a range of mistakes. Firstly, the student has mistakenly listed a type of data as their investigation type. They then describe some general characteristics, but there are no specifics about what subjective quantitative measure is being used to measure conformity or how. This section also contains some incorrect information and overall lacks coherence and clarity. Unfortunately, it wouldn't make sense in any deconstruction, let alone one about conformity. In contrast, students sometimes go the other way, where their deconstruction contains too much background information, with little to no description of how the chosen factor could be investigated or measured. In this example, the student's deconstruction question was, how does a person's occupational title evoke stereotyping? You can see that this student has done a great job at defining stereotyping, including their formation and factors that influence them in detail. They have also examined some of the different occupational stereotypes. However, what you see here is the bulk of their deconstruction, and thus it had no discussion of how occupational stereotypes could be investigated using any of the three design types. There was only a very brief overview of some potential measures that could be used. Therefore, while the background information is detailed and relevant, other core aspects of the deconstruction being missing impacted on their final grade. Here are some examples from a deconstruction where the student has attempted to evaluate potential measures and design types, but has only done so very briefly. It is lacking a lot of depth and has not been done in the context of the deconstruction question, which was about occupational stereotypes. These tables could be inserted into any deconstruction and most of it would make just as much sense, albeit still lacking detail. Here is an example of a method section from a design that lacks detail. 
Furthermore, the method is too simplistic and isn't evident of a stage one or two psychology student's level of knowledge. It should be clear from the method that the student has studied psychology. It should also contain enough detail that the person reading it could easily reproduce the method. The next common pitfall is a lack of justifications or the justifications are too generic and not in context of the question. For example, this justification taken from a deconstruction is very brief and generic. It doesn't explain why this design type is the most appropriate one to use for their specific context and question. Furthermore, it uses personal pronouns like me. This method contains no justifications in relation to how the procedure is being performed. All the student has done is repeat a point about gaining informed consent. The purpose of the justifications is to demonstrate your thinking and decision making process throughout the deconstruction design that is specifically in context to the investigation you are planning to undertake. The last common pitfall we're going to discuss briefly is the presence of contradictions due to inadequate proofreading. This often occurs between the deconstruction and design. For example, the factor chosen in the deconstruct is not the factor being investigated in the design, or there are differences between these two sections in relation to the design type, measure or sample being used. Sometimes contradictions also happen within the same section. Here we have a contradiction that occurs in two consecutive sentences. The student states that conformity increases with age yet then immediately says that people who are older and more mature may be less likely to conform. Mistakes such as these are easily avoided with careful proofreading and cross-checking what you have written in different sections. Now that we've looked at some of the common pitfalls in detail, let's look at some exemplars of success. What does a great deconstruction and design look like? You may wish to pause each of the next few slides so that you can read the exemplar at your own pace. This is a good example of part of a deconstruction where the background information is detailed and in context of the specific deconstruction question. It is clear and concise and references have been used. With the page limit, it isn't possible to include all possible factors that may impact on the question. You're much better off choosing three to four of the most relevant factors and exploring them in detail than trying to cover a wider range but in less detail. Here is another part of the same deconstruction. You can see that it contains detailed justifications throughout. These justifications are specific to the context of the question about occupational stereotypes and wouldn't make sense in any other deconstruction. This student's consideration of how the different investigation designs could be used to answer the question and potential measures, including advantages and limitations, is detailed and perceptive. The student demonstrates a deep understanding of both psychological research and the best ways to study and measure stereotypes. Their content is insightful and specific to their context rather than being a general discussion about investigation designs and types of data. The design should contain materials and method sections that are detailed and specific, enabling the reader to be able to reproduce the investigation. This means the materials section should include links or examples of any questionnaires to be used. Here is also another great example of a justification for why the student has selected a Likert scale to measure nursing stereotypes, further illustrating the importance of having justifications throughout the deconstruction and design. This is a great example of a detailed method section from a student's design. The reader could easily reproduce this method due to the specific detail contained therein. You can also see that the student has provided detailed justifications for each step of the method, explaining the reasoning behind the procedure, such as the choice of maths questions and why five trials are being conducted. Like before, none of this is generic. It is all in the context of the student's designed investigation into conformity. It is important for the design to include consideration of both controlled and extraneous variables. 
This is a great example of detailed and perceptive discussion of a range of extraneous variables, including their potential effect on the data. Note that their explanation of its possible effect on the results doesn't consist of general statements merely saying it will affect the data. Rather, they are specifically explaining how this factor may influence their dependent variable, which is conformity. Here is one final exemplar. This is a great example of detailed and perceptive consideration of ethical issues. The student is describing how each ethical issue is relevant and how it will be addressed during the investigation. In summary, make sure the deconstruction explores all required aspects in adequate detail. Clearly indicate and justify all choices made. Advantages, limitations and justifications should be detailed and in context. They shouldn't make sense in a different D&D. Designed methods should be detailed enough that it can be reproduced by the reader. And make sure you don't contradict yourself in the deconstruction and design. By remembering these points and avoiding the common pitfalls described, you should be able to create a great deconstruction and design and be successful. Good luck.